Okay, so um Perek Shnaim Vesrim in Shabbat Chavit page 146 starting from the lower part of the previous page Bifnei Ma'ot Dei Kochavim Mezoh Hamin Why the idolaters impure? Shalom Dela Har Sinai because they did not stand at Mount Sinai Har Sinai to accept the Torah Sheba Sha'ah for at the moment Sheba Nachash Al Chava that the serpent seduced Eve. Hatil ba Zuhama, he cast impurity into her. Is that the way it's phrased there? It infected her with moral contamination. Is the way you've got it. The word impure is not there. Yep. And he's added, and this contamination remained in all human beings. Yisrael she'amdu al har Sinai paska zuhamatan. So Israel who stood at har Sinai, the contamination was removed. Actually, paska means was kind of um, separated. He's got ceased, ceased. Yeah, he's sick, stopped. Yes, yeah. and they were ten right. Of the kochu in shalom do al har Sinai lo paska zuhamatan. For the idolaters who did not stand at Har Sinai, their contamination did not cease. Ama le Ravacha bere de Rava le Ravashi. Geri Mai, what about converts who didn't stand there? Ama le af al gat in hu lo havu mazal mazalayehu havu, even though they were not there, their mazal was there. He translates that as their guardian angel. Their guardian angel was there. <coughs> wow. Dirtiv et asher yesheno yeshno po imanu omed hayom lifnei Hashem elokeinu ve et asher ineinu po vegomer. Those who are standing here with us today before Hashem our God and those who are not here, etc., with us today. Ah. And this includes converts. So, where was that? That's in Dvarim. Yep. That's interesting. Those who are standing with us here today and those who are not here. Well, the, the full quote is, It is not with you alone that I make this covenant and this oath, but with he that stands here with us today before the Lord our God, and with he that is not here with us today. Upligat the Rabbi Abba Kahana, and this is contrary to Rabbi Abba Kahana. Dama Rabbi Abba Kahana. Ad shloshadarot lo paska zuhama zuhama mavotenu. Not until three generations uh, passed was the impurity, was the contamination uh, from Eve uh, removed from our forefathers. Did it cease from our forefathers? Avraham holid et Ishmael. Avraham fathered Ishmael. Yitzchak holid et Esav. Yitzchak fathered Esav. So both of those are impu- seem to have been contaminated. Yaakov holid shneim asashvatim. Shelo haya bahen shum dofi. In whom there was no aberration of God, or which means contamination. What do you have there for aberration? Well, he's got, um, Twelve tribes in whom there was no flaw. Mm-hmm. That's the <coughs> so this is the... Um, so what Rabbi Abba uh, Bar Kahana is saying, that moral <coughs> contamination ceased in the Petrick. Patriarchs long before Sinai. Before Sinai, yeah. Uh, I see. So, also, then, the thing about converts and the thing about, um, and this about the forefathers, it kind of goes against the Mount Sinai idea. Mm. Mishnah. Shoverat ametachavit lechol himena 
Gro Garot. A person may break a cask in order to eat the dried figs from it. Or Vilvad Sheloyit Kaven Lasot Kli. Provided he does not intend to make a vessel. The Enoch Vin Megufa Shelchaviv, who may not perforate the bung of a cask. Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. The Chachamim Matirin. However, the sages permit it. Velo yikvena mitzida, and one may not perforate it in its side. Bim haitan nekuva loiten alea shava. Now, if the cask was perforated already, uh, so there was a hole already in the mm-hmm. cask, him, you can't put wax over that hole. Mipne shehu memareach, because you're smoothing it. Or you would come to smooth mm-hmm. it, I suppose. Ama yeah. Rabbi Yehuda, Mase ba lifnei Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai ba Arev, ba Arav. An incident came before Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai in Arav, ba Amar, Choshoshani lo mechatat. I fear on his account, uh, in respect of someone plugging it with wax, uh, that he might be liable for a chatat. <coughs> Mara. Amar Rabbi Yoshaya. Lo shano ela drosot. The Mishnah's uh, uh, this was taught only in respect of pressed figs, so a cask full of pressed figs. Aval meforadot lo, but if it was a cask full of loosed, loose figs, you can't break it open. And this is because. Um, you need an instrument to separate the pressed fix. You're going to use an instrument. You'll discover this as you go, and you're going to use an instrument. Yeah, I can see all the. It's all there as well, but an instrument to separate the. This is because, in that case, it is permissible to use a utensil to separate the fix. That utensil may also be utilized to break open the barrel. Oh, so the same utensil we use mm. to cut the pressed figs with is the same utensil we mm. use. So that's why you can pick up the utensil in the first place, because yes. it's going to, it has a Shabbos purpose. And we have, a, it's mentioned later on, where a sword is permitted, but a spear isn't. Mm. And if it was loose figs? Yeah, well, they have, have, they're loose. At least you wouldn't need to. You need wouldn't need a uh, utensil. Yeah. For a dot law, but is this the case for? Is it really so for loose figs? Meaning we can't open it. Made today they challenge this based on Baraisa, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer. Maybe as I met a chavit shall yain person can bring a cask of wine. Or matiz rosha besayif. And sever its top with a sword, or manicha lifneha or achim b'shabbat, and place it before his guests on Shabbat. Vei no choshesh, and there's no concern for desecrating Shabbos. Hahi Rabbanah Matnitin Rabbi Nechemia he. That reflects the sages. Our Mishnah reflects Reb Nechemia. Umai docha ke with the Rabbi Yoshaya la okme Matnitin ke Rabbi Nechemia, and what force Rabbi Yoshaya to construe our Mishnah according to Reb Nechemia? That's a very good question. Ovid Rusot, and as dealings particularly with press figs. Lokma bim foradot farabanan. Let him interpret as dealing with loose figs. And which would follow the sages. Ama Rava Matnitin Keshite, Rava said. A Mishnah posed a difficulty for him. My area tani grogarot. Why didn't Mishnah teach uh, about figs? Let perot. Let it teach about produce of any kind. Elash mamina bitrosot. Rather, we can infer from here with pressed pressed produce. Uh huh. Let's see. As it goes on here. The mission is referring specifically to pressed dried figs, and it is because one requires a utensil to separate them yeah. that he may use it to open the barrel as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
account. It doesn't just say figs, it says dried figs. And there are all sorts of um, factors. Tanya Chada, Chotalot Shel Grogarot Veshel Tmarim Matir, one may untie ropes binding baskets of dried figs or dates. Um Mafkia Vechotir, or unravel or cut the ropes. But Tanya Idach, but another Baraisa teaches, Matir, it's permitted. Aval lo mafkia velo chotech, but you can't unravel or cut them. So what's the? I'll read you what he says. It's slightly more specific. It was taught in one brasa. If one has sealed wicker baskets of dried figs or of dates, one may untie the baskets not on Shabbat, and unbraid the basket and cut it open. And it was taught in another browser, one may untie the knot, but one may not unbraid or cut the basket. So it's uh, so when they've got unravel here, it's unbraid. Lokasha ha Rabbanan ha Rabbi Nechemia. Titania, Rabbi Nechemia Omer, Afilot Harvad, Vafilot Talit, Vafilot Sakin, even a spoon, a cloak, or a knife, ain't at nitalin ela letarech tashmishan, may be handled only for their use, their designated use on Shabbos. Ba'umi ne mirav shesher. And that means it's therefore prohibited to take a knife to cut out open baskets of fruit. Yeah. what he said it. Yeah. Sorry. That's right. This forms the basis for um, for being allowed to get it open with a knife or a sword, I suppose. But umi ne mirav sheshet. Mahu le mivraz chavita bevurtia beshabta. What about thrusting into the cask with a spear and shabbos? Lefitcha kamikavein vasir. Does the person intend to uh, make a new opening, and therefore it's forbidden? Or Dilma la'ain yafa kamikavein ushre. Or perhaps he intends to allow it to flow generously and is therefore permitted. So he wants to open the hole up a bit more. Amar lehu, lefitcha ka mikavein vasir. He intends to make an opening, and so it's forbidden. Metive, a challenge from a baraisa. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, mevi adam chavit shel yain, a person can bring a cask of wine. Umatiz rosha besayif, and sever its top with a sword. Hatam vaday la'ayn yafa kmikaven. There, it is certain he intends a generous flow of wine. Is that the way you've got it? Yes, he certainly intends to display generosity. That's with the sword. Yes. Hacha in ita de la'ayn yafa kmikaven. Here, with a spear, if it were that he intends the generous flow, lift to chay miftach. Just open the cask. Up with the from the bun. Yeah. Oh, he can. Oh, no. yeah, he said that by perforating the barrel, he indicates that he specifically wants there to be a small hole. Using the by the spear, the thrusting through the side. You know, there's one thing that they've forgotten. Mm. Seems to me that the um, clay pot will shatter under the in- impact of a spear being driven in the clay. Oh, I think timber. And not according to this drawing. So what, the spear's used to scrape back clay or something? No, just 
you hit it quickly, and you know, it's not it's not like porcelain. Did they have wooden barrels in those times? Maybe they didn't. Well, if you're looking at Babylonia, where you, you didn't have much in the way of wooden wood. trees yeah. and so on, it, it makes sense. That it would make sense. And when you think that olive oil was transported all over the Mediterranean in I mean they still have them, these big amphora. Mm. Yeah, it's very odd. So it seems to me maybe something that they're forgetting mm. is you need a, an inlet hole for air. And a generous flow could be could be facilitated by, by just it. having a relatively small hole yeah, stuck in the side. Right. Certainly that would create a generous flow. Mm, that would fit in more with something we're going to come to about putting in leaves to act as a a sort of lip. Oh. One may not perforate the bun as it said in the Mishnah. Amar Rav Huna. So Rav Yehuda said that, by the way. Amar Rav Huna. Machloket lamala. This dispute concerns a hole in the top of the bung. So is the bung at the top? The it's plug at the top? Yes. Yeah. Because the way I think of a bung is the, in the side in of the a side. The barrel. But okay. So it's concerning a hole in the top of the bung. Oh, yeah, in the top. Okay. Aval, Min he, he, calls, he calls it a plug. Okay, plug. It's better. We'll go with plug. So the dispute concerns uh, where it's in the top. Aval, Min Hatsad, but if it's in the side, Divrei Hakol Asur. Everyone agrees it's forbidden. Make a hole in the top. An, an unusual place to make a hole, since if one wished the cask to be open in that place, he should just merely remove the plug. That's what Rashi says. As for making a hole inside of the, pl of the plug, ah, however, everyone agrees that this is forbidden. So some people prefer to make this sort of perforation, and an opening there is therefore seen as an improvement to the utensil. An opening inside of the plug can be advantageous since this will create a spout to dispense the wine but will not allow dirt to fall inside as would occur if the plug was simply removed. That's what Rashi says. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Mm. Okay. Everyone agrees it's forbidden to make a hole in the side. The Haino de Katane is what? Uh, and this is what it is teaching us. Loikvena mitsita. You can't perforate on on its side. As per the Mishnah. Barakhista Mar Machloket min hatsad. The dispute concerns the side of the... It says here the side of the plug. It doesn't say the side of the car. What no. does yours say? Uh, we're going to come to that. Ah, good. Aval al gaba divreha komuta, but the top of the plug, everyone agrees, it's permitted. Baha de katani lo yikvena mitzida, and that which the mission teaches, one may not perforate on the side, hatam begufa de chavit. There... It refers to the body of the cask, mm -hmm. not the cap, which is what I was thinking all along. Tan Rabban. Ein nok bin nekev chadash b'shabat. You can't make a new hole in the vessel on Shabbos. The im balei osif mosif. But if you come to enlarge it, one that's already there, you can enlarge it. The Yeshumim and Musafin, and some say you can't enlarge. The Shavin, Shenokvin, Nekev, Yashan, Lechachila. But all agree 
that it is altogether permissible to reopen an old hole. The Tanakama, according to the Tanakama, Maishna Minekev Chadash Deloch, why may one not make a new hole? Tzikam et ken pitcha, because one is fashioning an opening. Osufe namikam et ken pitcha, enlarging, one is also fashioning an opening in the vessel. Good point. Amarava, devar Torah kol petach sheno asoy lehachnis ulahotzi. As a matter of Torah law, biblical law, any opening that is not made for bringing in as well as taking things out, eno petach is not considered a true opening. Would you agree with the way that's said, Peter? Uh, by Torah law, any opening that is not made to both insert and to remove is not considered an opening. Oh. Uh, okay. We'll say it's similar enough. <laughs> and he's added, and a hole that one perforates in a barrel is intended exclusively to remove the contents of the barrel. Right. Yes, that sounds very likely, yes. Uh, very good. Virabhanan hud gazur mishum lul shel tarnagolin. And it's the rabbis who made a gazera on account of the chicken coop. David le ayule avera la puke habla. Where there's a hole made to bring in, bring air in, and take vapors out. The imbale osif mosif. And if one comes to enlarge, uh, he can enlarge according to the Tanakama. Osufe vaday, certainly enlarging. Belul shel Tanagolim lo atela as. No one will come to enlarge a hole in a chicken coop. Mishum rechasha because of creeping things. The yeshum yemein musafim. So why do some say that you can't enlarge it? Zimnin de lo takne meikara. Sometimes one does not properly adjust the uh, chicken coop's opening when he builds it, so they need to kind of get it right. Mm. And later on, he'll come to enlarge it, which would be a biblical prohibition. Darash, Rav Nachman, Mishum, Rabbi Yochanan. And the fact of widening it or changing it is considered its completion. That's the, seems to be the bridge. Except, oh. according to Steinsel. I get that. It's just that it's only like with a chicken coop, you kind of got it a bit wrong. Mm. So then you need to fix it up, and then from then on, it's fine. Yeah, but if you got it wrong by not completing it properly, so by adjusting it, mm. you're completing it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the basis of what we're getting at here. I suppose so. Like, in in other words, what's the point in... What? Wine why bottle raising with the chicken too. But a wine bottle, a mm. wine cask, you know, there's a there's a plug there. There's a yeah. hole there. It, like, we know the size hole should be in, in casks, surely. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, that this idea of generosity. I, I suppose maybe it was a tradition there. If you had a big bunch of guests to show you a lavish, you'd sort of go boom to the top of the cask. Not only to show that you're lavish in the sense that you're going to pour out tons to them, yeah. but also that. No expense is spared for your guests because the thing is no longer reusable. I am going to go out on a limb and say all of this is in regard to making an air hole. Yeah, yeah. And that provides the generous flow. Mm. 
I haven't seen anything to... And that in itself would make the flow better. But then you, I mean, that, that leaves you with a funny idea of why, why the sword to open the barrel. You know, the spear would be ideal in that case. Because, and it could be that they weren't terribly well acquainted with physics. Well, why are we allowed to use we're allowed to use the sword because we can we cut the pressed figs, right? Mm. So, therefore, we can only argue the case of the sword. We can't argue the case of the figs. Mm. Sorry, we can't argue the case of the spear. No, it's still worth thinking more about that too. If we're talking about figs, then you can see <coughs> the connection because if the figs are pressed into the barrel, mm. you would have to have a wider opening than just you know, a relatively small opening to get at the figs properly. Which a sword would enable you. Which shackling the top of the barrel would enable you to do. Mm. But it wouldn't apply to a wide barrel. But given that you're now allowed to use a spear, mm. uh, uh, a sword, sword, it's all you've got to work with. Yeah, that's true. Um, anyway, you're you're taking the view, and it seems quite sensible that the main purpose of opening a hole is to allow air to flow so that the wine can be poured. I want to show you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Watson, Alan Watson, who was a former Lord Mayor of Melbourne, mm -hmm. um, and his family business in Carlton is Watson's Wine Bar. Yeah. And it's a lovely place, a big, quite a decent sized building, um, and they've got a wine, instead of a beer garden, they've got a wine garden out the back. Really <laughs> All surrounded by leaves and everything, beautiful. So, um, any kosher one? No. And uh, that I'm aware of. So, um, to amuse his better guests, mm. um, patrons, he would on occasion get a bottle of champagne. Mm. And he would get, his, he had this special spear, could have been a machete actually, mm -hmm. not a spear, a sword, could have been a machete. And just knock the cork out. And, he, and he'd, no, he'd, he'd run it along the edge. Mm -hmm. And before the cork, there's a, another glass, there's a glass bulge. Yeah. So it'd get caught on that glass bulge mm -hmm. and it would break the entire glass. Ah, so it just flip the top of the bottle off. So the entire glass mm. would shatter, not shatter, would yeah. slice at that point, and the wine would then the champagne would flow out. Yeah. Quite cute, spectacular trick. Yeah, well, it was fun watching him do it. Like he thought for sure that he was going to, it would just smash everywhere. It's uh, very. Rav Nachman, Darash, Rav Nachman, Mishum, Rabbi Yochanan, Halachaki Yeshomim. So it follows the opinion of Yeshem Rim, which says you're not allowed to enlarge a hole on Shabbos. The Shavin Shenokvin Nekev Yashan Lechachila. So the Brayser said, all agree that it is altogether permissible to reopen an old hole. Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel, Lo Shanoela B'Makom Ha'asui Lechamer. They taught this only in a place where it was meant to preserve the aroma. And he says it was made to strain the, the wine from the sediment. Ah. So it was meant to strain the wine from the sediment. So the plug couldn't have been anywhere near the sediment area. You wouldn't think so. Mm. But we move on to okay. discuss where the bloody hole is, <laughs> of course. Avala Chazek, but if it's in the place 
So if the hole was in a place where it was to strengthen the cask, I saw it's forbidden. In other words, I suppose you might come to break it altogether. The plug was intended to ensure that wine did not flow out of the hole in the cask. Presumably, this sort of plug creates a full and complete seal, and therefore, from a legal standpoint, it erases the existence of the perforation. Removing this type of plug is therefore forbidden, as it is tantamount to making a new hole, according uh, to Rashi. Does that help? Well, you know, if you think of it in the way we talk about how you're supposed to open a tin on the Shabbat. Yeah, those who say that you have to perforate the bottom before you open the top so that you don't make a clear out of it. You've got this seal thing and you take off the top. You make a clear out of it. You completing it as a container mm -hmm. into which things can be emptied without in and out. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what we're getting at. Oh, maybe. I see your point. Okay. Heichi dame le shamer, what's an example of preserve, meaning where the plug was put in a place where it's meant to preserve? Do you have preserve le shamer? Uh, well, we've got Strain, and then we've got... Uh, Could be guard. Uh, strengthen. That's le chazek. Le chazek would be, yeah. So, uh, hang on. Let's... I've lost myself. Hechi uh, dame le shamer. Have you got that? Oh, it's made to strain. The white... Said, however, if it was made to reinforce the barrel, it's prohibited. Yeah, go, what's before that? Lechazek. Aval lechazek asur. And after that, what's the next sentence? Echi dame lechamer. Lechamer. Yeah, so what's the translation of that? Echi dame lechazek. With a question mark. What are the circumstances in which a hole is made to strain? The strain? And what are the circumstances in which a hole is meant to reinforce the barrel? Strain. The shamer would be to guard or, as it says, to preserve. All right, let's keep going. So what's an example? Just trying to think of how the shamer could be taken to be strain. I suppose only in the sense that to guard the wine from mm -hmm. having sediment in it. Mm. Or is meant to strain. Mm. Do you have any more of a note? No. No, just perforating the old hole and nothing else. So. Okay, we'll keep going then. Amar Chista. So they ask, what's an example of Le Shamer and what's an example of Le Chazek? Amar Chista. Le Mala Min Hayain. Above the level of the wine in the cask. Zehu Le Shamer. So that's the place where it's permissible to reopen an old hole. Well, according to this one. So okay. it's a, above the level of wine. Which Lem would mean that any sediment that was there would remain at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. And you'd get... Oh, it's a good strain. Thing. You could pour it out mm. and it would keep everything down yeah. below. Yeah. Whereas if it was on its side... Yeah, it would be if a lot more difficult. the bottom, the stuff would come gushing yep. out. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Sorry, I'm just thinking about it. I'm thinking about a... Uh, is it called a slag furnace? Where they... Where you put all the... Like metal ore and everything in there mm. and it heats it all up and you've got pipes running off at different levels, taking out different, where, yeah. wherever, it, like the sediment of one particular kind 
comes to sit, that's where it runs off through that hole. That's what I'm, why I'm thinking like, if the hole was, if the outlet plug was put just towards the bottom, but maybe say that far from the bottom, mm. it would still do a job of straining it out. Yeah. Anyway. Lamata, so if it's below the surface of the wine, zehu lechazek, this is meant to strengthen uh, the placement of the ladder plug makes clear that it is pur its purpose is to keep the wine from flowing out of the cask. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What's the point of putting a plug down the bottom there at all? It must be to um it must be to stop wine coming out. Mm. You wouldn't fill it from that hole, that's yeah. for sure. <coughs> Ravamar Lamata min hayay nami zehulashmer. Rava ma lamata min hayay nami zehulashmer. So when it's below the surface of the wine, this too is to, is lashmer. Behechi dami lechazek. And what's an example of strengthen then? Kegon shenikva lamata min hashmarim. Where, for example, the cask had been punctured at the very bottom, just below the level of. Does that make does that make sense? That's that's what the way he translates it. To. And that's where it was plugged. So that's their understanding of lechaz. That's Rava's understanding of lechazek. <coughs> no, I just can't understand in what way. Can I just read Rashi's on that? the barrel. It says since the entire weight of the wine exerts pressure on this sort of plug. It must of necessity be a strong one, according to Rashi. Thus, the, thus reopening the hole is like creating a new opening. Yeah. It's, it seems to me you're taking the word chazak mm. and twisting it in all the it's different... It's a different way. Mm. 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 de dim sayalach. Uh, it's not that. Yeah. What we're not ta we're not talking about the barrel being strengthened. We're talking about the plug being strengthened. Mm. It was to strengthen, right? Amalea by the Rava, Tanya de Misayalach, Brisa was taught that supports you. Rava says, thank you very much. What is it? Beit Satum, a house where that was sealed. A house, yeah. A house with a sealed entrance. Yesh lo arba amot. is entitled to four amot. Adjoining the entrance. Adjoining the entrance just as if the entrance was still open. Well, that's a very curious writer. Parat et patimav. But if you took down the door frame when you sealed up the entrance, ain lo arba amot. You're not entitled anymore to four amot. And I, I've learnt this in Baba Basta, uh, which <coughs> we're doing at, you know, on Monday nights, yeah. about courtyards, when two people ha have access to a courtyard, the courtyard is divided between them equally. Mm. But each one gets four cubits at his front door. At the door mm. uh, of whatever number of doors. So yeah. if you've got one door, you get one lot of four cubits. You've got two doors, you get two lots of four cubits. And if you've got one door that's open and one door that's sealed, uh, you get two lots of four cubits because you, it's possible to unseal that sealed door so that you have access unless, to the courtyard. Unless you have pulled down the frame and sort of sealed it there because then you've shown that there's no door anymore. You have no intention to have a door. By such a so this is back in the Baraisa, a house 
Oh, this is a house with a corpse inside and the entrance is sealed. Eino matame kol sivav does not render tame uh, all the sides of it. Anyone who approaches within for a month. Parat et patimav, but if you tore down the frame of the door and the house is completely sealed up, metame kol sivav. The house does render tame from all for a month from all sides. Ah, because it's like a grave. Oh, that's curious. Well, I didn't know why, but now I do. You've told me. Mm. This supports Rava's claim that only the strongest of all seals, i.e. a plug in the very bottom of the cask, legally eliminates the opening it had plugged. Oh, that's an interesting analogy. Ah, the ritual impurity in a sealed house. Go ahead. Rashi and Tosfot disagree whether a sealed house transmits ritual purity in a circumference of four cubits all around it like a grave, or whether it transmits ritual purity only under ledges adjacent to the house, which would constitute a tent over the corpse, were the corpse to be removed from the house at that location. Mm. Guvta. A spigot. Is that a tap? Yeah. It's in a barrel. The spigot is that little tap that they have at the bottom that they open and close to draw off wine or beer. Or in the hardware industry, we call it a tap. No, we don't. No. I would have been prepared to believe it. <laughs> we call it. It does. It has a name. Uh, it's called a. I think it is, there's a special name. I've forgotten what it is. Uh, a spigot. Rav Asar. Rav Kavitz. Ushmol Sharei. Ushmol Permit. He translates it as inserting a reed through a hole in the barrel. But I, I think the spigot is really... Mechatech lechatila, initially cutting... Ah, oh, so it is a reed because it serves as the spigot. So cutting the reed... The chule alma lo plige del sur, everyone agrees forbidden, adure, and putting uh, one that's already made back in after it came out, the chule alma lo plige de shara, everyone agrees it's permitted. Ki plige de chaticha velo mitakna, where they disagree is that it has been cut to serve but has not been perfectly trimmed. Mandasa, the one who forbids putting it in, gazunan. Dilma Ate Lemichtach Lechachila, the rabbis issued a gazera, forbidding lest one come to cut it in the first place, or man to shari, one who permits it, law goes unan. There's no such decree. Katane, it's like uh, the dispute of the time. Ein Chotchin She Foferet Beyom Tov, on Yom Tov, we may not cut a tube. <coughs> this is a battle between Rav and Shmuel, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can't cut a tube uh, for a spigot. The and it goes without saying on Shabbos. Nafla machzirin otav b'Shabbat. If it fell out, we may return it on Shabbos. The and it goes without saying on Yom Tov. Rabbi Yoshia Mekel and Rabbi Shua rules leniently. means he can put it, he puts it back. Mm. Rabbi Yoshia Ahaya, concerning which did he state his leniency, Ilema Aresha, concerning the beginning, where it's trimmed, Ha Kamsaken Mana, surely this would be perfecting a vessel, a vessel. And how could he be permitting that? Ella, safer, rather, it's concerning the end of the bracer, which is about uh, putting it back in when it fell out, mm. but we have a difficulty. Tanakama Nami Mishra Kashare, the Tanakama also permits putting it back. So, why have we raised this issue? Ella de Chaticha Velo Mitakna Ika Ben Ayehu, rather, that the difference between them is where the 
tube has been cut already, but has not been per perfectly trimmed. Okay. Uh, what he's got is it was cut but not inserted into the barrel. Uh, in the at in the beginning. Mm. Uh, hang on. Okay. Master Rogaz Junain and one master, the Tanakama holds the sages issued a decree forbidding, and it says placing the tube in the hole, mm. which sounds to be like what you're talking about. Yes. Or Master Rogaz Junain and the other master, Rabbi Yeshua, holds that the sages never issued such a decree, and that's why he's the lenient one and says, go ahead and stick it in. And that's Shmuel. Shmuel? Mm. That's Rabbi Yeshua. Uh, that's Shmuel. Anyway. Well, it says Rabbi Yeshua, Yoshia. No, at the beginning of the argument, he oh. was talking at a battle between. Now, you're right, Rabbi Yoshia at this point, who's clarifying the battle between. Uh, Rav and Shmuel. I see. Darash Rav Shisha Bered the Rav Izi Mishmei the Rav Yochanan. Rav Shisha the son of Rav Idi, lectured in the Rav Yochanan. Halacha ka Rabbi Yoshia. Yeah. You can place a tube in a barrel for use as a spigot, even if it has not yet been trimmed to perfectly fit the hole. Ah, that kind of brings in a double mm. whammy there. If the cask was already perforated. Sorry. He's added mm. uh, to, and if the barrel was already perforated, he's added one may not seal the hole with wax. Uh -huh. No. Oh, really? Why would they bother throwing that in there? Oh, that's in, in relation to the Im Haitan Yeah. So if the cask was already perforated, oh, the rest of the mission actually said, and one wished to plug the hole, he may not place wax upon it. Yeah. Remember, you might wax, smooth it, which is a forbidden. So how would you do it? Maybe we'll find out. Mishcha, thick oil to plug it. Rav Asar, so that's basically like ta. Must be something of that nature. Rav prohibits it, u Shmuel Sharei, Shmuel permits. Man Dasar Gazriyam Mishum Shava, the one who prohibits it, the sages issued a decree because of wax. So they made a comparison, similar, they said it was similar. Or Man Dasar Gazriyam, the one who permits it, did not issue a decree. He says the sages never issued a decree. Amale, Rashum Baba Khana the Rav Yosef, the Feirush Amar Amart Lan Mishmei the Rav Mishcha Shari. You explicitly told us in the name of Rav that thick oil is permitted. Amar Tavut Rishba Amar Shmuel. Tavus Rishba. He was a hunter. Mm. Now, there, there's no little note about him. Note about him at all. Except it does say on 17b, his name is there as well. Yeah. So, maybe earlier on it talked about him. Rishba is from the word Nishbin Nets, was given to him because he was a hunter, spreading nets to trap game. I remember you telling me about this, Peter. For sure, for sure. Well, it's gone out of my brain. Because I think there seemed to be a... I think we had a discrepancy. Anyway. Tavus Rishba, Tavut Rishba, said in the name of Shmuel, Hi, Tarpa Dasar Asur. That, the practice of a myrtle leaf into the hole is forbidden. Why? My Tama, what's the reason? Rav Yema Midifti Amar is to be used, at the myrtle leaf goes in to be used as a spout. So it's probably a leaf that comes to a point, uh, sort of curved into a point, so that you're making like a tube out of it. Sort yes, of. yes, it sort of helps you direct it, like the spout of a jug. But 
we're talking about plugging it now. Is that specifically said in there that it's talking about it? I get the fact that it could be used as a spout, but we're talking about plugging. It's prohibited and inserted into a hole in the barrel to be used as a spout, he says specifically. Schneider says. Then, goes on, the Gamara asks, right. what is the reason for this? Yes, that's what Rashi says too. Ah, uh, oh, so it's not talking about a plug anymore. It's talking about using it as a spout. Okay, so we're not talking about the plug, we're talking about using it as a spout. Okay, thank you, Peter. Well done. Uh, so, Gezerah Mishum Marzev. It was a decree because you were making it into a gutter, I've got here. Marzev, what do you have for... Yeah, due to the concern, lest one come to make an actual spout on Shabbat. Okay. Ravashi Amar, Gezeri Shema Yiktos, a decree was issued lest you pluck a leaf. Yeah? Lest one cut. Yeah. Mai Ben what's the difference between these two? <laughs> There's a big difference, obviously. Ika Ben the difference between them, Dictis Umanchi, where leaves have been plucked. What about the case where the leaves have already been plucked and placed in readiness before Shabbat? Mm. Okay. Um. And he's added, but Rav Yehimah would still rule stringently. Um. So according to Rav Ashi, if one pluck the leaves before Shabbat, he may put one in the hole at Shabbat, so there is no danger that he might pluck another leaf. But according to Rav Yamar, as he said, even if the person has a number of leaves already prepared, he still may not put one in the hole since this appears as if he, he has created a spout. Be mm. Sadya uh, fell padding. Surely that's to plug it up. No. No, this is clothing. Oh. And sitting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there one day. Uh, uh, the Gemara now embarks on an unrelated topic. <laughs> I don't believe it. Why? The Gemara never goes on unrelated topics. How oh, dare they even imply? Um... Felt padding, Beisadya. Ravasar, Ushmel Share. So, what does it say? Ravasar prohibits one to wrap himself with his cloth and transport it through a public domain. Yeah, Gemara cites another dispute between Rav and Shmuel with regard to felt cloths upon which people typically sit, but that may also be worn as cloaks. The sages disagree whether or not one may wrap oneself in them on Shabbat and transfer them from one place to another through a public domain. Then we get on to yeah. our prohibited. You know, I would have imagined the the question begin, began with you can't plug up a hole mm. with wax. Now let's think about some things that you could plug it up with. Yeah. Let's, we've got some leaves over there. Just mm. stick it in. You've got some felt padding over there. Stick it in. You would tend to think that that was the way things were going. So maybe they've done that. They said, here are some things that we could use to plug it up with. Mm. But let's discuss them. There are other possible functions. Yeah. The rack in. Soft felt. Yes, there's a difference between soft, hard, and medium felt that comes out in the argument. So soft felt. Everyone agrees that it's permissible to wrap yourself with it and transport it like that in a public domain. But kashin, when it's stiff felt, everyone agrees transporting like that is prohibited. Where they disagree is concerning intermediate texture. <laughs> One who prohibits uh, 
he says it's because it looks like it's a burden, mm-hmm. not wearing it as clothing. Or man to show lo masoi. One who permits it, well, that is, does not look. It's, he says it doesn't look like you're carrying a burden, and it is indeed clothing. Bahadur of love beferush itmar, and whatever Rav ruled here was not stated explicitly by him elamiklala itmar, but rather was stated as an inference from uh, someone who saw what he was doing. The Rav Ikla Lahahu Atradalo Havad Le Ravta, sorry, Ravcha, Ravacha, Ravacha. Rav came to a certain place where there was not room for everyone. Nafaketiv Bechamelit. So he, assuming that that would be Rav, sat yeah. in a Karmelit nearby. Ayetu Le. Be Sajja. So the students brought him some felt padding to sit on. Loyalty, but he would not sit on them. That's because they brought it to him by wearing them. Yeah. But it must have been that they were it didn't it didn't look good enough the way they were carrying them. They must have been Well, read on and you okay, will see. Read on. Man de Khaza Savar so it was concluded, Mishum Deve Sajja Sur, because the felt padding uh, uh, So because the felt padding being carried is forbidden, that's why he forbid it, Velohi, but it, that's actually not what happened. The Rav Achruze Machriz Be Sajja Shari for Rav publicly declared Felt padding, wearing felt padding is permissible. Umishum kavod rabotainu lo yashavalav. And it was only out of deference for other rabbis, he never sat on it. That's nice. And it goes on, as he did not want to sit on a higher and more distinguished surface than they did, the Gemara adds, and who were these rabbis? Rav Kahana and Ninvo? Rav Asi, who uh-huh. were Rav's disciples and colleagues. And his colleagues. And he didn't want to feel bad sitting above them? He's acknowledging them as equals. Ah. Cool. Mishnah. Not to be in touch with the Tokhabor, Bishvil, Sheyehe, Shamur. One may place a cooked dish in a pit in order that it be preserved. And good water, into stale water, in order that it cool off. Remember, this is one vessel inside another. <coughs> we learned earlier we had the good vessel. Thank you. In order that it cool off. So it's talking about the good water, which yep. is warm, and he puts it into stale water, which is cool. Yep. The et hatsonen bechama bishvil shecham shechamu, and cold water in the sun, in order that it become warm. Thank you, Tanakama. Mi she nishru kelav b'derech b'mayim, one whose garments fell in water while travelling, me'alech b'hen ve'eno chashesh, may walk in them and need not fear that uh, people said that he laundered his clothes. or what, And also the, the, about prohibition against ringing. Ah. Higia lechatzer hachitzona. When he arrives at the outermost courtyard, shotchan bechama, you can spread them out in the sun to dry them off. Avalor keneged ha'am. But don't do it in front of people. As they will suspect him of laundering on Shabbat. Gemara. I see it. All these people in this village, these villages watching each other like mad. Someone was telling Joanna that they, when they got first got married, she and her husband lived down in the areas down near Adas. So it was terrible. They were being watched and judged all the time. And it was a great relief to them when they moved to other premises.
That was one of the good things about Nachbarot. It was a very, it was a very laissez-faire style. Mm. No one really judged you. We, it, you, it's plain and obvious <laughs> that people were breaking Shabbos, whatever. But everyone still. Jane and I almost bought a flat in Mayor Shadow. It was a very nice flat on a rooftop. And thank God, uh, we were gazumped. You know, we agreed to pay whatever the bloke wanted. Mm. And then when it came to signing the contract, he wanted more. And we were saved. Because we got some very hostile looks when we were coming down from looking at the flat by a couple of turbaned women who lived in the same building. And Hilarious. Would have been hell if we'd actually moved in, I can imagine. You might have influenced them. You might have liberated them. Uh, they might have poured pig's blood under our doors and marked big crosses on them too, <laughs> or put up signs. Yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, Joanna was uh, sort of very film in every way of covering and so on. Particularly at that time, hair yeah, and everything. Where would you have done? But she always had nice, nice clothing, sort of clothing that, you know, it would, hair was covered in a colourful scarf, and, you know, and that wouldn't have fitted in in the area at all. This the eighties. Yeah. Okay, so putting a dish in a pit. Pshita! Hello, it's obvious. Mahud the tamer, you might have said, Nigza Mishomashvoye Gumot. The sages uh, decreed, would have decreed against this because of one smoothing out depressions in the bottom of the pit. Kamash Malan! So the Mishnah informs us we never had such, there was never such a decree by the sages and you can go ahead and stick it in your pit without fear. Don't <laughs> <laughs> stick it in your pit. The etamaim hayafim b'raim and good water into sale. Pshita! That's also obvious. Sefer itzdrichale. Who wrote these pages? The second clause of the Mishnah which uh, gives an a converse point. Uh, is necessary. It says the etatzon in bechama and cold water in the sun. So good water in start. So it was. Made that it was made as a preface, good water into stale water, as a preface to one put cold water in the sun. I wish there was a note about. Well, shall I read what he's got? Yeah. We also learned in the Mishnah one may place good water into. Okay, can you read that? Okay. We also learned in the Mishnah one may place good water into bad water on Shabbat in order to cool it off. The Gemara says, it is obvious that it is permitted. The Gemara explains, it is necessary to mention the latter <coughs> clause of the Mishnah which states that it is permitted to place cold water out in the sun. So that's why it's necessary to do that. The Gemara expresses so, why, 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 why? why? Uh, necessary to mention, it is necessary to mention the latter clause of the Mishnah which states that it is permitted to place cold water out in the sun. The Gemara expresses surprise. This too, cold water, uh, is obvious. The Gemara answers, lest you say that we should issue a decree prohibiting this action because perhaps one will come to insulate it in hot ashes to warm it up which also heats the water without actually placing it on the fire. It teaches us that we do not issue a decree in that case.
So all this is, to, according to this explanation, exists to explain why there is no decree against putting things in hot ashes, which might warm the water in the same way as the sun does. And which not is not forbidden. The first is not forbidden, and the sun. second looks a bit like it, and therefore there's the fear that the rabbis might issue a decree stopping you from putting it out in the sun, because it's like putting it in the ashes. Ah. I see. So, that's so, why so the whole I, so I get that now. I get that they didn't issue a decree to stop you from putting it in the sun, but how is it related to putting good water into stale water, warm water into cool water? <sighs> is it because it's a similar argument? I suppose because it's a matter of placing. You're placing good water into bad. You're then placing cold water in the sun to heat it. And then you're placing cold water into ashes to heat. Mm. So <coughs> in each case, something is being placed into something else to get a certain effect. Yeah. I think that's the connection. Sounds like it. You might have said we ought to make a decree. And someone less time comes to bury food in warm ashes. No yeah. such decree as that. Okay. So it's actually stating it for the sake of permissibility. Yeah. And against gazeras. Yes, and you know. It's <laughs> putting a damper on the machmerim. Mm. Yeah. Mission is Shuvachule. One whose garments fell while travelling in water. And doesn't need to fear. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav, Kom Makom Shasruchach Mimifrei Marit Maratayin. So, when the sage is prohibited because of the appearance of wrongdoing, Afilu Bachadre Chadarim Asur. The act is prohibited even in one's most private chambers. Tonight we learned Shotchan Bachama. He may spread them out in the sun. Aval Lo Keneged Ha'am, but not in front of people. So, why would it do that? Uh, Tanaihi, this point is of Tanai, of Tanai dispute, to Tanya. Shotcham Bachama, you can spread them out in the sun, Avalok and Egedam, but not in front of the people. Rabbi Elazav, Rabbi Shimon, Shimon, Ostrin. Hmm. Your favourite, Peter. Amar Rafuna. I'm surprised. Hamina Er, Talitor Beshabbat. One who shakes out his cloak on Shabbat. Ah, this is in respect to cleaning a garment. To remove dust that collected on it. That's the way he's got it here. I think we should leave it there. Yeah. Pick this up tomorrow. This is very curious. Oh. So, you... So they issued... For Ma'arat Ain, they issued gazeras that you couldn't even do in private. Mm. So how does this... So how do we reason out this issue about Lokanegat Ha'am? Mm. That you can do the thing, but you're not...